action. Maybe the same strategy. Tell us a little bit about the story. Yeah, so we got the, the pump, I mean, the play, the play on the days. So it is hosted uh, with two acts. And uh, this is the Divine Madness one on the, uh, on the notes, Divine Madness. Alright, so with that, um, it's hosted with two acts, and in the beginning, the first act, Salieri, which is an Italian court composer, so if um, Mozart is the protagonist in this story, then um, uh, Salieri would be the antagonist. Yeah, so he's introduced in, in scene one, so... He, he claims to be like a famous, a very famous, one of the greatest musici musicians of all time. And so uh, it starts off with like whispers in the beginning saying that like he, he needs to be pardoned by Mozart because he killed him or something. And that foresha foreshadows a little bit ahead of the, uh, of, the, of the play. And so this Italian composer claims he's a you know, greatest of all time until he hears of uh, Amadeus Mozart. And so he, he's uh, intrigued and he's curious about this mysterious character. And so later on in the scenes, uh, they introduce Mozart and his wife. Wait, how you pronounce her name? Constance? Yeah, so they introduce them and they're some weird characters. They're like a bit goofy, they're pretty childish. Um, I think they're described to be like 30 years old. In their 20s? Yeah, so um, at, at the very beginning, you can already tell like Mozart has a very like erratic or like ener energizing character. And so um, that kind of plays along with the with the prompts that, you know, he's defined as madness and stuff. But um, a, little, a little going forward, uh, they, uh, Mozart talks about composing a uh, a play or a, what's it called a concert for the emperor, an opera. So um, Salieri becomes like a bit curious as to what, like he, he comes aware of um, Mozart's like court composing and mu music and stuff. So he's curious to meet him, meet him. And so like around scene five, like scene seven, I mean, they come to like to meet each other and Salieri, like, at, at the moment he sees his wife, he becomes a bit jealous of him. Like, she has everything almost, like, that's what um, Salieri feels and stuff. So that creates a bit of a, of a little complexity in the character and stuff, and tensions between the relationships. So with that, um, they start, Comparing uh, pupils, those are like students they teach and they uh, mentor. So Salieri claims that he has like over like what sixty pupils, and um, one he described to be a uh, Katharina. Um, he says that she's German and like she's my prized pupil and stuff. So that, you know he's already claiming possession and stuff, um, but. They're, they're setting out to be that um, this Katharina girl is going to be like one of the greatest uh, singers of all time, right? Yeah. And so uh, Mozart, while he's um, trying to compose his, uh, his opera for the emperor, uh, he decides to choose uh, Katharina for his singer. And so that, that, that created like a bit of a situation between um, like how Salieri was feeling and stuff. And so... Um, with that, after, after, like, at that moment, Salieri decided, like, you know what, like, I don't like this character, Mozart. And he's starting to feel that jealousy towards him and stuff. Um, and, you know, a after all, he hears his work, and he, like, he admits that he is, like, a really good musician. And so that also adds on to his, uh, his jealousy and his, uh, um, resentment towards him. Any guys, anything you guys want to add to that? Okay, and so um, throughout the course of the play, in the beginning, um, we could see how um, Salieri gets like really like jealous or he envies Mozart, especially during their first time meeting. Um, when they first meet, 
um, Salieri has this song that he composed as a welcoming song for Mozart to like just meet him and everything. And then like after the emperor, not the emperor, but like after everybody else leaves, um, Mozart goes like, oh, like I, I think I can remember it because it was an easy song. So he basically humiliates him in a way to like, like show him like he just does a song in a better way. And so that, that makes Salieri like angry. He's like, oh, you just like use my song that I composed for you and you just try to show off and make it better. But no one asked you to do that. But like he just does it. And so then Salieri just gets like really angry. You can see how the jealousy just takes over him. And then throughout the <coughs> throughout the rest of the play, it's just jealousy that's like making him mad and everything that makes him like reflect on actions and do certain things. He just does it out of jealousy. Yeah, like for instance, uh, when the part of the play where he asks his wife, uh, uh, Mozart, to come to his house, so she goes. She's still kind of like innocent, so she doesn't really know what's happening, but obviously he wants to do something with her, like to make uh, Mozart jealous. And um, <clears throat> she, they need a job, like they need to start playing for like big operas because they're running out of money. So she brings all his... Um, like his plays and like his operas in her and his binder, and um, he's like, "Well, I'll get him the job if you give me a kiss." So she gives him a kiss, but she was like, "Okay, that's it." And then um, he kind of bribes her into leaving his um, his work with him, and Salieri kind of goes through it, and like he's like in a way like so happy, but he's so like empty at the same time because he's like, "I have the work, but like." That's all his original copies. That's the only copies he has. So that's everything that Mozart has. And like um, <clears throat> from there, there's just so many scenes where they're all just always competing with once like with um, with each other. And like to a point where they just don't enjoy even playing anymore because it's just a competition between them. Okay. Um. So for number one, where it says, "Where is it?" Um, like the definition of the. Madness. I would say that Mozart is very, he's like very hyperactive um, to the point where he's, he says a lot of things that he shouldn't. And um, the play is from Salieri's point of view. So in his eyes, he sees Mozart as like his like rival. Um, yeah, as his rival. And he also, when, like how Eileen said, when he's going through Mozart's um, plays and his music, he has this moment where he realizes that his music is like beyond good, that he knows he can't like beat it, basically. Like he knows um, he's basically mediocre compared to Mozart. And he has a moment where um, he starts questioning God. Um, he, he says he'd rather God used him as a conduit like for the talent that Mozart has rather than him because he's just like that jealous basically. And throughout the whole play, he's just like questioning God. He's saying um, like each time Mozart fails, because he, he sets him up for failure. So yeah, he sets him up yeah. for failure. And each time he knows the outcome and Mozart is like um, doing really bad. Um, Salieri, he, he questions God and he says, um, he asks himself, he's like, do I feel any pity for him? And he, he quickly like answers himself too. He says, no, because God doesn't feel pity for Salieri, like basically um, not letting him <coughs> be the best. And that's what I would say would be for number one. It's just like a whole thing with jealousy and like I kind of said before, like I feel like the madness in this play would be defined as them always competing each other and always um, trying to be better than each other. But it gets to a point where they don't enjoy what they're doing anymore. So that's kind of like what drives them to be more and more competitive. But um, something that also I feel like has to tie into this is that Salieri sets him up, like you said, for failure. He um, introduces him to the emperor and he plays an op uh, like an opera for him. But the emperor literally hates it and he just like says it that it's like so bad and then mozart is like very confused because mozart's like well i think this is like the best opera i've ever played and mozart is i mean uh, sanjay is like agreeing with him but he knows what the emperor likes he knows like his um his taste so he's basically telling him like 
the opposite of what's happening. So he tried to set him up with that job, but it didn't work out because <coughs> obviously the emperor didn't like it. But um, anything else you guys want to add to question mark? Or should we just move on to uh, so the second question is, what characters um, in Prime Madness or Irrational Behavior plays uh, an important role in the play? Can the uh, delusions and Irrational Behavior be judged uh, rational? So, um, I mean, kind of like we've already said in the first one, it's like Mozart and Salieri. And, um, I mean, so I, I, I think you can see like a little obsession with both. Like, yeah. um, you can see how Mozart is like so like fond of his music. He's like he's wanting to play everywhere. He's wanting to play for the emperor and stuff. Um, but you can also see a little like obsessive tendencies in Salieri as well. How he wants to like uh, overcome um, like overcome Mozart in every way. You know, to be honest, I don't know. Um, so like you said um, about Salieri's like. He has like a, he wants to like seek revenge over Mo Mozart like in a way because there's been certain things that Mozart has done like how um, Danny said that he acts like he doesn't think about what he says sometimes or what he does so like um, there's this there's the what's, it, what's her name Catherine her she's like Salieri's like lover type even though he can't have her because he's married it's like he still has eyes on her so when Mozart like goes like for her obviously there's like some tensions of like oh like not only do you want to be like a good composer but now you're taking my lover like someone yeah. who like i know i can't have but like, you know i want so it's like he's just seeking revenge for him like this whole time yeah and like as well like in the, the beginning of the play he says that he can't have her he just has eyes on her yeah. but towards the end of the play we see that like, over the years that's his mistress yeah. that like he does everything with her and um I guess it pushed him over the edge like when uh, Mozart came because he first didn't want anything. It was just like a position he had, but then afterwards he's like, no, well if Mozart wants him, like wants her, then I have to go to a point where I like don't believe in the values that I have for myself or my wife. So he pushes him over to um, have an affair with, obviously with Catherine. So that's something. Do you want to add anything? Okay. Yeah, right, so the third question. Okay, so the third question is, how does Magnus uh, contribute to the overall meaning of the play? So what I would say that like Magnus would be in this is kind of like jealousy, and I feel like that always like comes back to every single one of us, how sometimes we aren't like comfort with what we have, and like we see other people doing better, and instead of like wishing them well and like being happy for them, we sometimes get jealous. And like, I feel like, um, we all kind of have to go through that just to realize that that's not what we should do and we shouldn't think like that because it pushes us to do stuff that in our head we would never do so it's kind of like uh something that we all um should probably work on like in ourselves so um overall you can see how um Salieri's madness can push him over the edge. So um, in the beginning um, of the play, he's like on his like deathbed, or he's like he's like confessing basically his sins. And there's but there's where he mentions like, did I or did I not kill Mozart? Because like Mozart died like really young, and like in real life, um, it was through his conditions. But there's been rumors that he was poisoned, and like in real life, he was poisoned. So. In the beginning of the play he talks about like oh did I or did I not contribute to his um, uh, death or like however he died so um, oh, what is it? so like um, you can see how um, all this jealousy that like they had towards each other in this competition could have pushed Salieri to possibly like murder Mozart just so he could say oh I'm better because like you know he's not here no more so I could take over and say I'm better than him reason why it kind of led up to Mozart's death is because of the emperor, he, he mentioned that Princess Elizabeth needed a tutor, and since Mozart didn't have like as many pupils as um, Salieri, he wanted Salieri to put in a good word for him to um, get him the job because at the moment his father had died, and so he, he didn't have any like money coming in and um, Salieri would make promises to Mozart, like, yes, I will like talk to them, I will put in a good word, but 
But in the end, since Sagiri saw him as his rival, he didn't want to do anything to help him. He basically just wanted to destroy him, take everything from him. And um, eventually, it led up to um, Mozart not having like a job, and his wife and his she took his kid, and basically they left. They didn't divorce or anything. She kind of just left to go visit her father, I think. And um, as years went on, Mozart started running out of like things, like jobs. Basically, he didn't have any type of jobs. So he was starving and he was living somewhere where there wasn't any like um, warmth. So he, he died from the cold, but um, right before he did die, his wife came back and she was kind of just trying to comfort him knowing that he was going to die, but there wasn't anything that she could do. So I think, <coughs> Um, the madness overall was just, like Eileen said, jealousy, and how it drove Sagiri to do all these like horrible things, and he said he didn't feel pity for him until he died. to like review his motivation for like, you know, killing him and stuff or whatever. But um, I don't know, you said that was all a rumor though? Like that wasn't like for sure? Oh no, in real life, there was a rumor that he got poisoned. So that's why I'm saying it could tie into the play to how Sagiri talks about like, oh, did I or did I not kill him? Because that's what he says on, like, on his deathbed. Or yeah, like you said, like after um, he died, he felt a little bit of remorse and guilt, right? Mm -hmm how he confesses and he, he also says like um his god smiled and permitted it and like you know he kept on blaming mozart for like for his mishaps and him not you know getting accepted to glory and fame and stuff but i don't know you guys want to um also at the end of the play after Mozart dies, Salieri basically expects that his music would be like all over the place and people would recognize him for who he is. But um, eventually, Mozart's music is the one that ends up like um, being heard like all over the world. And he he had jealousy of him, like even then, after Mozart had died. And. Um, because that's true, like if you search up like the 1790s like music, the first name that pops up is Mozart. Mm -hmm. So it's something that um, a lot of people would say, like would look at this play and be like, well, you kind of contemplate whether or not Sagiri killed them because that's a rumor. But I mean, the rumor has to come out somewhere. Like it's not because they just made it up. So yeah, I agree with that. And in the end, it was kind of just Mozart, the one that ended up like winning overall like the jealousy didn't get to him. He didn't, he also didn't realize that Sanieri had like that much hatred towards him because yeah. he was always such a like energetic person that he didn't stop to think about anything really for a second. Yeah, I just wanted to add, this, this sounds a lot like uh, Hamilton, if anyone like really? is familiar with it. That's like the whole premise of Hamilton is that like, one dude is super duper jealous of the other dude, and he ends up ends up like killing him in the end, and then feels remorse at the very end. So, yeah, it's a story that doesn't get old, <coughs> right? That that rivalry and that uh, 